So what exactly is complex PTSD? Despite growing interest in this diagnosis over time, it's surprisingly difficult to find someone who can define precisely what these words mean, even among seasoned mental health care professionals. When people do take a stab at a definition, there tends to be very little agreement from one person to the next about what exactly is involved. In this video, we're going to see if we can make some sense out of the confusion around complex PTSD and come to some clarity. As a brief note, if you haven't watched my videos on PTSD and borderline personality disorder, make sure to do that first. I'll put links to them in the description below. In our video on PTSD, we characterized it as a narrowly defined set of specific signs and symptoms that occur following a trauma, with re-experiencing, hyperarousal, and avoidance being the main three patterns seen. This particular set of signs and symptoms is seen most often when trauma is experienced by adults, specifically between the ages of 10 to 55, and when the trauma is a one-time event or brief series of events, like being in a car crash or being in military combat. However, when traumatic experiences deviate from this pattern, they tend to create forms of psychiatric pathology that don't fit the narrow definition of PTSD in the DSM. In particular, exposure to chronic interpersonal trauma during early development, such as someone who endured years of child abuse, can lead to signs and symptoms that not only present differently from cases of single exposure adult onset traumas, but also don't respond to the same kinds of treatments. The term complex PTSD is increasingly being used to describe these cases. While there is a lot of agreement that chronic developmental trauma is different than textbook PTSD, there is a lot less agreement over how it's different. Perhaps the single biggest reason for this lack of agreement is the fact that there are no diagnostic criteria for complex PTSD in the DSM, which is widely used not only in the US but across the world to help define specific forms of mental pathology. However, it's worth noting that complex PTSD is listed in other diagnostic schemes, such as the ICD, which is put out by the World Health Organization. In the ICD, complex PTSD is defined as encompassing all of the same signs and symptoms as in traditional PTSD, which we defined in a previous video using the mnemonic trauma, with re-experiencing, hyperarousal, and avoidance following a traumatic event that leads to long-lasting distress and disability. However, in addition to these core criteria, three new criteria have been added, emotion dysregulation, a negative self-concept, and interpersonal difficulties. So you can think of complex PTSD as PTSD+. Plus. It's PTSD plus these three new elements. If you've seen my video on borderline personality disorder, you may notice that all three of these criteria seem to overlap with features of BPD, with emotional dysregulation resembling affective instability, a negative self-concept resembling issues with identity, and interpersonal difficulties resembling unstable relationships. Naturally, this raises some questions about how complex PTSD fits in with that diagnosis. Indeed, some people argue that complex PTSD is basically PTSD plus BPD, and on the surface of things, this seems like a reasonable conclusion. However, if you dig a bit deeper, a few important differences emerge. While both BPD and complex PTSD feature difficulties in the same three domains of emotion, identity, and relationships, the specific way in which patients struggle with those three things differ. Patients with BPD tend to have relationships that are emotionally intense and often very unstable due to splitting and a high sensitivity to rejection and abandonment. However, they still attempt to engage in relationships, sometimes even to an excessive degree. In contrast, patients with complex PTSD tend to avoid or withdraw from relationships altogether, leading to feelings of loneliness or being distant or isolated from other people. Similar patterns are seen with the identity disturbance. In BPD, one's sense of self is highly unstable and often changes based on who the person is around, with role absorption being common. In contrast, in complex PTSD, one's sense of self is generally quite stable, though it is often stably negative, with a poor sense of self-worth and a tendency towards self-blame that doesn't seem to go away. The final domain, emotion regulation, seems to have the most overlap between BPD and complex PTSD, with similar feelings of emptiness and chronic dysphoria being seen. However, BPD has some associated features such as chronic suicidality and a tendency towards self-harm that aren't found in complex PTSD, or at least not to the same extent. So the take-home point here is that, while BPD and complex PTSD appear to affect the same areas of one's life, the way that they do it is different. Just to complicate matters further, PTSD and borderline personality disorder are not the only two conditions that have a strong link to trauma, 
as somatoform and dissociative disorders also have a clear relationship to trauma, and chronic developmental trauma in particular. The relationship between somatoform and dissociative disorders with complex PTSD is even less well characterized than with textbook PTSD and borderline personality disorder, though we do know that somatization and dissociation are both exceedingly common in patients with complex PTSD, suggesting that there is a large degree of overlap. However, more research is needed before we can tease out subtle differences with somatoform and dissociative disorders like we did with borderline personality disorder. When looking at how the newer diagnosis of complex PTSD fits in with more established diagnoses like PTSD, personality disorders, somatoform disorders, and dissociative disorders, I do wonder how much of the interest in complex PTSD comes from the fact that patients with these other diagnoses may find complex PTSD to be a more attractive disorder, as the conception of this as a trauma-related diagnosis Mm -hmm. puts the emphasis on the patient as the victim of unfortunate circumstances in contrast to categories like personality disorders, where the emphasis is on the patient as the potential cause of the pathology. The doubly unfortunate part is that both of these assumptions are completely wrong, as trauma-related disorders have as much to do with the trauma itself as with the person experiencing it, while personality, somatoform, and dissociative disorders are all clearly linked to trauma and do not imply that the root of the problem lies with the patient themselves. Nevertheless, these beliefs are common, which may lead to people with personality, somatoform, and dissociative disorders rejecting these diagnoses in favor of a diagnosis of complex PTSD, even if they fit the pattern of those other disorders better, which has the potential to direct them towards the wrong kinds of treatment. Speaking of treatment, clear guidance on what is and isn't helpful is hard to come by, as research relies upon a widely agreed-upon definition of the diagnosis, which does not yet exist. However, the research that we do have suggests that complex PTSD does not respond as well to treatment as textbook PTSD. In particular, medications don't seem to help as much, with a history of childhood mistreatment predicting a lower rate of response to medications like SSRIs. Therapy seems to fare a little better, as things like CBT and exposure therapy do seem to reduce not only traditional PTSD symptoms, like re-experiencing, hyperarousal, and avoidance, but also may improve interpersonal relationships and a negative self-concept. However, just like with medications, the extent to which they improve tends to be less than with textbook PTSD. So where does that leave us with complex PTSD? From a practical standpoint, I think the concept of complex PTSD is important primarily because it highlights an important point, the differentiating between adult-onset single-exposure PTSD and more prolonged developmental trauma is an essential step in working with patients who have experienced trauma, and that each form likely requires a different approach to treatment. Beyond that, we just have to hope that, as more research is done, more clarity will come on exactly what the diagnosis entails and what forms of treatment are or are not effective. I hope you got something out of this video. Prior to making this, I had only a vague notion of what exactly complex PTSD involved. A lot of my understanding of this diagnosis came from a specific paper which I'll link in the description below for anyone interested in learning about it at a higher level. In the meantime, please leave a like or comment below, consider subscribing to the channel, or picking up my books on psychiatry and neurology on Amazon. Bye for now.